It's called Machine 9 and it's a giant uh, cylindrical phonograph uh, which transforms space debris into sound uh, as it passes directly overhead. The instrument um, is, is the final bit in a long chain of uh, electronics and software. The beginning part of the chain is uh, a number of publicly available databases uh, which are open source. Um, which tell us where pieces of space debris are in orbit uh, and also what the space debris is called. So we have telemetry data and uh, a catalogue essentially of space junk in orbit. And then what we've done is we've built our own simulation which takes all that telemetry and uh, models the, the um, positions of all 27,000 pieces of space junk in real time uh, and interpolates between daily um, presentations of that, that, that positional information. Then we take that, uh, that, that model and that publishes to the machine uh, the positions of each uh, piece of space junk that flies directly over overhead where we are right now. So every time a piece of space debris comes in, uh, it tells the machine to find one of uh, a thousand grooves which are laid out along the cylinder and, and play it with a, a mechanical record stylus. Uh, and all the sounds are laid out uh, from left to right along this aluminium cylinder uh, from low pitch to high pitch. And depending on the size of the piece of debris that the instrument detects, it will play uh, a very low sound for a huge piece of debris and a very high sound for a very small piece of debris. The sounds um, are actually recordings that I made uh, with lots of volunteers of pieces of terrestrial rubbish from Earth. And what I did was I asked the public to send me pictures uh, and items of debris that they collected from their gardens and from their kitchens and from their bins, which reminded them of what they think space debris is like. So they sent me lots of tin foil, lots of things made of metal, because uh, they think, we tend to think of space debris as being metallic. Uh, they sent me lots of electronics and circuit boards and vintage camera parts because they think they look uh, either futuristic or uh, retro uh, and then they send me lots of poetic things like feathers and pebbles and things which are very not space debris and then I used all those to generate a thousand sound recordings. Space debris is silent. Uh, it's silent because it's out of earshot but it's also silent because it is in a partial vacuum so you can't uh, we can't hear it, even if it wanted to make sound, it can't. And I think, I want to hear what space every sounds like.